As we told you at the top of the program, President Obama delivers his State of the Union address tonight, 9 Eastern. You can see it right here on Fox. Here to talk about that and the Republican response, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. Welcome, Senator. Good evening, Brett. Senator, the president, according to the White House, will say that millions of Americans who work hard, play by the rules every day, deserve a government and a financial system that does the same. It's time to apply the same rules from top to bottom. He will say no bailouts, no handouts, no cop-outs, an America built to last insist on responsibility from everybody. How do you respond to that? Well, we've had a lot of all of those things in his administration. You know, he's going to challenge the Congress, Brett, to do a lot of things, but the issue is not what he's challenging Congress to do going forward, but what he's already done. We're living in the Obama economy. It includes a downgrading of our credit rating, a debt now the size of our economy, which makes us look a lot like Greece, an almost trillion dollar stimulus bill, Obamacare, Dodd-Frank, an explosion of government in every direction. And the American people in November 10 took a look at that and decided to issue a national restraining order uh, to stop that. So clearly, this Congress is not willing to give this president a blank check to keep on doing uh, what he was doing the first uh, two years. So I think most of what you'll hear tonight will be an effort to kind of divert attention away from his own record. I don't think you'll hear him bragging about the stimulus or Obamacare or Dodd-Frank. He's certainly not going to talk about uh, the, <clears throat> the downgrading of our credit rating. Senator, uh he will also say that he wants to work with people in the chamber, mm -hmm. but he intends to fight obstruction with action. When mm -hmm. you talk to Democrats, including the White House, they often point back to your quote back in 2010 in October, saying, quote, the single most important thing we want to achieve is for President Obama to be a one-term president. They say that was an indication back then that Republicans were not willing to work on various issues, and that's the result of where we are now. Well, of course, that was in response to a question of what I'd like to see politically, but I also, in, in that very same quote, which is always conveniently left out by the Democrats, said that was in 12. The question was, what will we do now? And when the president met us in the middle, which was unfortunately on rare occasions, we were able to, to do things. We passed three trade agreements that had languished on his desk from the day he was sworn in, an FAA bill, a highway bill. When he wanted to, to meet us and do things, uh, we did. But mainly, Brett, the last a year or so, now that he doesn't have a Congress that he completely owns, like he did the first two years, uh, the, the idea has been to score points, to pick fights, you know, to make us uh, the issue. In other words, to look for somebody else to blame. In fact, the blame game started last August with the town meetings in, uh, in North Carolina. And we've heard the following uh, culprits, uh, the tsunami in Japan, the debt crisis in Europe, of course, the Republicans in Congress, rich people, Wall Street, it's everybody's fault but his that we are where we are, almost as if he expects us to think he just got sworn in a couple of weeks ago and just arrived on the scene. Senator, uh, he will not, we're told, mention the Keystone XL pipeline, which, of course, the administration uh, turned down after the State Department uh, decision there, and he agreed with it. However, the administration points to this, that crude oil production is actually higher than the years when George W. Bush was in office. The percentage of oil imports is at its lowest level in 16 years, and they say the administration has offered and continues to offer millions of acres of public land for oil production. Do they have a point there? Well, the reason uh, imported oil is down is because of the uh, economy uh, being so bad. Uh, with regard to increased domestic production, it's related to private land uh, production, largely with uh, hydraulic fracturing and some other things that the private sector has developed that this administration has had absolutely nothing uh, to do with. In places where they could impact, they've been a problem. And I can imagine why you wouldn't want to mention the Keystone Pipeline, an entirely private sector uh, effort wouldn't cost the government a penny. All it needed was the president to sign off on it. Would have created 20,000 private sector jobs almost immediately. Of course, he doesn't want to m mention that. Uh, that's a way in which he obstructed the private sector from creating 20,000 jobs almost immediately. I can imagine that he's not likely to bring that up. Last thing, very quickly, Senator. Uh, we haven't talked to you since the end of December and the back and forth of the payroll tax cut and extending mm -hmm. unemployment benefits. Were you disappointed in how Speaker Boehner handled all that? Well, we, I think we agree. House and Senate Republicans agree that we want to extend the payroll tax holiday for a year. 
uh, the difficulty has been getting our uh, Democratic majority here in the Senate to pay for it so it doesn't add to the deficit. Regretfully, back in December, they would only pay for two months. Uh, we're going to reconvene uh, and make sure the Senate Democrats understand that we're not going to add this to the deficit. And we're all in favor of extending the payroll tax holiday for a year, but we need to pay for it so we don't increase the deficit. Senator McConnell, thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you. No grapevine tonight, so we can bring you more policy.